Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Following Australia in South Africa. This is the show that is designed to keep you up to date with how the Australian cricket team is doing in their tour of South Africa. And in today's episode, of course, we're going to be looking at the third test. This was the decider of the series. Of course, Australia won the first test but couldn't win the second test. So it came down to the third test. Who would win? Would it be Australia or would it be South Africa? We're going to be reviewing that very shortly, but please note that this is not the last episode of Following Australia in South Africa. We still have two more episodes to go, which will uh, be released in the next two Tuesdays, of course, next week and the week after. And they'll be looking at the 2020 series, which is going to be kicking off this Sunday. All right, now that I've got that out of the way, let's get straight to the reviewing of the third test. So let's get straight into it. For the first time in the whole series, Australia finally won the toss and elected to bat. And it was a very, very good decision because they had an absolute excellent first innings batting display. Let's go through some of the totals. We start with Chris Rogers, who only got 25 runs of 41 balls, but David Warner, wasn't he fantastic? He got 135 runs of 152 balls. A great display by David Warner, and he deserves a big round of applause. So let's give him one. Tasmanian Alex Doolan only got 20 runs of 66 balls, while Michael Clark got a big whopping 160 run runs of 301 balls. I remember watching him for about half an hour stuck on 99 runs and it took him ages to get 100 and I was a bit nervous that he might get out on 99 but he didn't. He got that century and I was pretty proud of the Australian captain of course. He hasn't really batted as as good in the last two tests than he did in the third test. Um, Smith, he got 84 runs off 155 balls. Uh, Watson, who came in for Sean Marsh, of course, Watson was injured in the last two tests, but was able to return in the third test. He got 40 runs off 32 balls. Haddon got 13 runs off 21 balls. Johnson got out for a duck, uh, zero runs off one ball. And Harris not out, four runs off three balls. Clark was also not out at the end of the innings. They did declare because they had a big whopping total of 494 runs. You might as well declare and bowl them out and then just get on with the second inning. So they did declare with Patterson and Lyon left to bat. Um, so yeah, that was the uh, the first innings uh, of Australia. And we now go into South Africa's first innings. South Africa finished their innings on 287 runs, well behind of Australia. And some of the wicket takers for Australia uh, Harris got three wickets. Johnson got a big four wickets. Patterson, who came into this third test, got two wickets. And Watson, who returned from injury, got one wicket. Some of the batting displays from South Africa, as I just look here, there was not any centuries. Uh, Peterson was the big uh, total taker, as well as Plesis. I think that's how you say it, Plesis. Uh, with 60, 67 runs off 135 balls, and Pedersen got 53 runs off 62 balls. They were pretty much the, the top two uh, batsmen who took out the most wickets um, for South Africa in their first innings. But like I said, they were well behind. They finished on 287 runs, bowled out, and Australia were well in the lead going into their second innings. The second innings started with Chris Rogers getting 39 runs off 67 balls. But David Warner got another century, believe it or not. 145 runs off 156 balls. It was a brilliant effort by Warner. He has just been so good in this test. Um, just a great century from him. Another century in, uh, sorry, two centuries in one test is just a very big achievement. So well done to him. Um, Alex Doolan only got 37 runs off 87 balls. So I don't know. He, I don't know really. He hasn't really been in great form, to be honest, in my opinion. He just, you can't get, you know, enough runs. I guess 37's okay, though. 
uh, I guess it's better than, you know, zero. Um, so I guess it's okay, but not, not the best that he can do. Um, Watson's got 25 runs off 17 balls. Clark got out for a duck after getting a century, so that's a bit unfortunate. Got a century um, and then got a duck, uh, while Warner got two centuries in um, two in one test. Smith got 36 runs off 20 balls, not out, and Hatton got three runs off three balls, not out. And then that was the end of the innings because Australia declared on... 303 runs, they were still well in front, and South Africa had a lot of work to do going in to their second innings. The second innings saw Graham Smith, who announced his retirement during the week, uh, so this saw him bat for the last time with South Africa, and unfortunately he only got three runs off three balls before being dismissed, so not the best way you would like to um, finish. But um, he has been a great batsman for a, a long time and great effort from him. And I think he does deserve a clap for his great career. <laughs> However, they only finished the second innings on 265 runs. Some of the wicket takers for Australia. Harris got four wickets. Johnson got three wickets. And Patterson got two wickets. And also Smith got one wicket as well. And this meant that Australia has won the game, won the series, but won the game by 245 runs, and they have won the series. 2-1 against South Africa. They've won the Test Series. It's just such a great feeling as an Australian. I'm so happy that they've actually uh, won this series. Of course, the Ashes was just so big, but to win against the number one ranked Test side and put, a, put ourselves um, closer to that top is just a fantastic feeling. So South, uh, sorry to South Africa uh, for beating them, uh, but well played. Uh, they really gave us a show in that second test, and it just all come down to the third test. It was real exciting. So well done to Australia. Very happy. And we now go into the 2020 series against South Africa, and this is our last uh, 2020 series run before the 2020 World Cup. So we need to get this... 2020 series right. So that's it for episode 3 of Following Australia in South Africa. I do hope you enjoyed um, this episode and remember there is two more episodes to go. The next episode will be next Tuesday where yes we're back to the Tuesday slot now that the test is uh, is over and we don't have anything um, blocking in the way of us doing an episode on Tuesday. So Tuesday next week the 11th of March is when the next episode will be, and the 2020 series will be starting on the 9th of March, which is this Sunday, so next episode we'll be uh, reviewing that 2020 game, and of course the next episode we'll be reviewing the, the next two 2020 games as well, and then that will be it for the series. I, I do hope you've enjoyed this series, by the way, if you've watched all three, or, or you've just watched this video, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've got something out of it. And I hope you're proud that Australia has won the series. Of course, you can follow me on a wide range of social networking sites. I've got Twitter, uh, face, uh, sorry, Twitter, I don't have Facebook. I have Twitter, Instagram, WordPress, and Tumblr, BevoB5 for all of them. Uh, you can just search me up or you can go down to the links, uh, to the description below. All the links will be there. Um, and also, Beverly 5 Productions has a Twitter handle as well, a Twitter name where you can go follow us. Uh, Beverly 5 p is the username. So once again, the um, link will be down in the description below. I do hope you've liked and shared and commented on this video as well. And I hope you've subscribed because subscribing will really motivate me more to do more great cricket and sporting videos on this channel. So please do subscribe and show your support. I'm Jacob. Thank you very much for watching Following Australia in South Africa, Episode 3. I'll see you next Tuesday for another episode of Following Australia in South Africa. Until then, I'm Jacob. I'll support you later.